Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen news. A huge amount has been happening over the last week in Star Citizen. Star Citizen Alpha 3.17.1 has gone live. We've got Fleet Week that started. We've got some new ships. We've got a letter from the chairman's come out. And we've got the stuff that we normally have from the week as well with Inside Star Citizen, Star Citizen Live and a little sneak peek. So let's go over all of that. Welcome to Invictus Launch Week 2952, the annual celebration that pays homage to the UE Navy and stands as one of the greatest displays of military might in civilian space. Fleet Week is on until the 31st of May, 8pm UTC. Everyone can play Star Citizen for free, at least until that time. Rub shoulders with the legends among the clouds of Crusader, tour a massive in-service Javelin Destroyer, witness the RSI Bengal soar throughout the system, and test fly a huge selection of military ships. There was a little bit of a problem with the UE fleet and the Navy not turning up but that's now been bug fixed or hot fixed. Um, there is a best screenshot competition from uh, f around Fleet Week as well. So uh, you're supposed to take pictures from around the sort of expo hall and area and um, best picture sort of wins. The Dunlow 2952 Derby is also um, happening as a little racing competition. During Fleet Week, you need to use a Pisces to fly around Orison at Crusader in and out of the floating platforms there. I'll link down below the actual sort of um, track and the course there because it's self-enforced and there are HOTAS-based prizes from Thrustmaster, which you might want to win. And also, people like these little silly um, sort of racing competitions around uh, areas in the Persistent Universe. There are loads of ships available to buy on the RSO website during this time, with that sort of um, list expanding every 48 hours as new manufacturers turn up to Fleet Week and the Expo Hall there. You can try those ships for free, you can buy them on the RSO website. They will have at least 120 months insurance when sold as part of the Fleet Week sale. The Anvil Legionnaire is a stealthy boarding ship that hacks docking ports of ships and then forcefully docks with them. So really it's a focused sort of boarding ship. It can carry eight um, sort of marines and two other crew. It's on concept sale currently from $100, so it's actually pretty cheap as far as Star Citizen ships go. We know the Drake Mule is also coming out during the Drake Defense Con as part of Fleet Week on the 28th of May. That will be straight to drivable and is a little cargo vehicle. Until the 2nd of June as well, there are discounted starter ship packages with the C8X Pisces and the Avenger Titan being available. I am a massive fan of the Avenger Titan to start the game with. I do think it is one of the best, if not the best, starter ship that you could potentially go for. But certainly get involved with Fleet Week. It's going to be awesome. Um, tomorrow, um, on the 22nd of May, we've got um, various new ship manufacturers taking the floor. And you will not want to miss what they have available for you to try out. At the moment, it's Anvil. But as I said, every 48 hours, that changes. Inside Star Citizen looked at both Fleet Week's law and talked a little bit about the Legionnaire. Um, so check that out if you want. We had a Star Citizen Live AI round table that covered many topics. I will be breaking this down into its own dedicated video with some more context soon as well, because I do think the AI and NPC stuff is quite important to talk about and how it, the sort of short term goals um, and mid term goals and then sort of like the longer term goals with a more fleshed out quantum system and AI blades and things, how that all sort of needs to be worked on and, and what we're expecting from that in the future. The sneak peek this week was on of a flashlight attachment for FPS weapons that we're going to see in game as they sort of expand out more and more of the um, various customizations that weapons will be able to have. Star Citizen Alpha 3.17.1 is out live as well. That also contains all that Fleet Week goodness, but let's go over those patch notes. So we've got the window interior mapping shader. So this is a shader that they've added to the game that will display 3D interior rooms that change perspective when looking through windows. You'll see this on sort of like um, on buildings, um, sort of looking in glass there, in the windows there. Eventually this will also be used for ships like the A90 Jump to sort of show an interior at range, give the sort of ship depth without fading to black. They've added the RSI Scorpius into the mix, so that's that heavy two-seater X-Wing um, from RSI. Uh, Lightning Polish Pass for Hurston's Volumetric Clouds has been done. There's been a ship paints update. Paints can now be stored in personal and ship inventories to allow players to move them around. Uh, they've added a paints filter to the inventory tab. They've updated the intro bounty mission ship AI to be more balanced for new players. They've increased shield health of the size 2 shields. They've added the ability for players to purchase shop items directly into their ships, as long as they've got enough um, sort of storage volume there. They've added a new refueling console to the rear catwalk platform of the Starfarer. They've updated the minimax wait times for uh, insurance expedite fees of the Cutlass um, Steel, Consolidated Outland Hoverquad, and Miskull 
A. They made further performance improvements to streaming bubbles. Performance polish pass has been done on large planetary storms. They've updated the game glass bindings for 3.17.1 if you use game glass, which I do recommend you do because you can try it for free. Well, you can get one shot. You can have it for free. It's just that it's got more ex sort of expandability um, if you... Uh, want it to cover more shards and do more operations as well. There's a link down below. I shield for game glass because they're good. There's various bug fixes too. They fixed an issue causing ships and components to duplicate after a character reset. Uh, an issue causing bunkers to not clear corpses between mission instances. Elevators should no longer collide with players while moving to their destination. Selling an item should no longer reset search filters back to default. Um, they fixed an issue causing uh, passive detection ranges to be drastically reduced for all ships and vehicles. Reloading weapons should no longer fail when emptying and reloading consecutive magazines. An issue has been fixed where players could equip any mag to the bearing BR2 shotgun. Missiles should no longer be able to hit and damage entities that they were launched from. Fixed an issue causing torpedoes to prematurely detonate before reaching max lock on range. The lock ping controls to scanning mode settings should now correctly apply to mining mode ar markers for ships turrets and other objects should no longer visually block the mobile glass interface the oxygen o2 timer in the mobile glass should now correctly take into account the player's suit oxygen supply traveler rental kiosks should no longer have a blank ui and appear black when accessed. They fixed an issue causing characters and objects to not display animations and appear to teleport while moving when looking at them from distance through higher magnification scopes. An issue that was causing the fuel purchase price to slowly increase after players have committed to purchasing their fuel from a Starfarer has also been fixed. Players should no longer be able to request docking to a Starfarer if they're refueling boom arm is not extended. Starfire's upper turret should now have atmosphere. They fixed an issue causing the 300 series of ships to consume hydrogen fuel at a higher rate than intended. Select deselect attachments on the FPS weapons in shops confirmation window should now correctly function. The character should no longer be missing geometry for hollow compass on the bridge technical deck. They fixed an issue causing some of the character's component bays and suit lockers to not be able to be closed after opening. Oxygen should now be present in the character's repair room. Lots and lots of character um, sort of fixes here. Players should now be able to sit in the chair in the character's captain's quarters. The Starfarer's co-pilot's inner thought UI to turn a ship off should no longer block the multi-function display access. Star Lifter series landing gear should no longer compress, causing the ramp and elevators to collide with the ground. Misc Prospector paint options should no longer be missing from the Vehicle Manager app. The cave interiors on planets with breathable atmospheres should now correctly inherit the atmosphere of the planet. There should no longer be invisible trees that players can collide with around Microtech River. Zin will be happy with that one. Uh, loot crates in underground facilities should no longer duplicate and overlap inside of each other. They've added additional robustness to loot transfer to help items quickly transfer from loot crates to personal inventory. Using attachment interface to remove attachments should no longer cause some attachments to become stuck on the weapon and become unremovable. The Hornet Pirate should now give combat assistant mission credit when destroyed. The Price of Freedom laptop should no longer be missing its UI prompt, preventing a critical aspect of the mission from completing. Supply and demand for buying and selling commodities should no longer instantly refill. They fixed an issue causing comrades to be missing their missile defenses and size 10 turrets. They fixed an issue causing comrades to incorrectly have trespass zones which will give the player a felony they fixed an issue causing some players to not receive their badge for completing pirate swarm in a group uh, armatex armor cape should no longer appear to be blown by the wind when there isn't any projectiles fired from underground facility turrets should no longer be invisible and should no longer have a, a chance of being silent they fixed an issue that was causing ships to be docked with the Starfarer and Gemini and um, could sort of fall in atmosphere. They fixed viz area issues with multiple doors on the upper deck of the 400i. The destroy illegal drugs mission should now complete correctly after destroying all drugs. And they fixed 12 client crashes, 9 server crashes, and multiple back end service crashes. That's actually quite a lot of bug fixes for 3.17.1. However, there are still some various known issues, some of which are new. The platinum base shops at rest stops will temporarily have a generic depot screen on them until they sort of um, get the uh, appropriate one done. Uh, Orison, the AI marker for players designated landing areas only appears when the players get within a close proximity to the starport. Ships can explode after a player exits them. While docked to a starfarer, the Valkyrie can tilt. The damage to a player's health 
can become delayed and then trigger after you've healed yourself. The Argo's Raft elevator controls cannot be interacted with from either side of the deck. A ship may become untargetable and their uh, pips can go missing for um, sort of tracking them. Characters, uh, head, mobile glass and other equipment can sometimes go missing after being released from prison. Medical beacons will not complete their mission and payment when a player is brought back from incapacitation sometimes. Character animations are not playing for people looking down scopes at a long range. Uh, spawn closets do not open or remain open for friendly AI, which is really annoying because that means that sometimes you can't kill all the ones you need to kill. Uh, the energy jump, AI do not spawn in the appropriate number for missions associated with them. Bunker turrets will shoot a player with a lawful mission to be at the bunker. The remove claim jumpers mission does not progress after the player has reached the mission location. Place me balls around uh, outposts on Daymar are just there. There are some elevator problems that can cause elevators to become duplicated or not appear properly and trying to buy from pharmacy kiosks causes a failed invalid location message to appear. Boom! That's it for your little Star Citizen weekly update. So I will be breaking down that letter from the chairman as it's massive and there's a load of information there. Uh, we will be looking at that AI uh, Star Citizen Live, but also I want to give some additional context and talk about what Tony Zerovic talked about a little while ago, because people to ask about Quanta all the time, they ask about AI Blades, and I sort of want to put all of this together, look at the short, medium, and long-term goals of AI and NPC stuff, as well as talking about things like the bartender and the coffee vendor. But anyway, what do you think? Are you excited for Fleet Week? Is there a particular ship that you want to get your hands on, or is this the first time you're playing Star Citizen because it's free? Have you been able to get some friends into Star Citizen? What do they think? What do you think of that Legionnaire? Is it worth buying ships, or do you prefer to get everything other than your starter package from in-game? What do you think of that Star Citizen Alpha 3.17.1 patch? Has it fixed some uh, critical errors? Has it brought in a load more? Is it a great patch now, or does it still need some work? Whatever your thoughts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. I saw NordVPN once. I was in a forest late at night. I'd got lost and then I heard it and an earthly sound as if the wind was talking to me. NordVPN.com slash board gamer. Then I saw him run at me. He was so free, almost as if he could be anywhere in the world. America, France, Australia. He was so secure, protected in layers of encryption that I could not even fathom. So majestic. Well, I heard that NordVPN was as big as a bear and could kick your head off. I've also heard that, which is why, just in case, I go to nordvpn.com slash boardgamer to appease the beast. You can find links to that down below. If you're looking for a new god, why not try NordVPN? Every month we have a ship giveaway, this time for May to celebrate Star Citizen Alpha 3.17's release. We're giving away three prizes to three separate winners. An Origin 100i Luxury Starter Ship, a Consolidated Outland Nomad Versatile Freighter, and an Aegis Avenger Titan Multi-Role Ship. They all come with lifetime insurance and access to play Star Citizen. To be in for a chance of winning one of those three prizes, just comment on any of my videos made during May. More details in the description below. Thank you so much to everyone that watches, shares, comments, and likes my videos. It really does help the channel grow. Be sure to subscribe for more content. If you would like to go to the extra mile in supporting the channel, there is Patreon links below. There's a join button under my videos as well on YouTube that makes you a highly elite channel member with some extra perks and exclusive content. There's also the thanks button, which straight up gives us money, and you can leave a highlighted comment. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great May 2022.